go through what we did in the last class so that you are in sync and it's kind of a revision and then I'll give you this. Yeah, so we learned how to create a class in Java. I just walk through this. Uh, we import java.util.star. Why do we import it? Because this list and all this won't come without a java.util.star. They are all in java.util.star. So we import java.util.star. Then we create class student. Class student consists of four state variables. Roll number, which is of type int, name, string, gender, char, age, int. Then the line 7 contains a constructor. Constructor's purpose is to initialize the data to some sensible value. If I don't initialize it that way, it will take some default values, which for cares will be some blank value. For strings, it will be a null. For ints, it will be 0. For floats, it will be 0, 0. Uh, so that is the constructor. It takes four parameters, R, N, G, and A and initializes all the data members appropriately. Then we wrote a two string method. Why did we write two string? So that when we try to print an object, we get something sensible. If I don't write a two string, what will I get? I'll get class name at hash code, right? Which is, doesn't convey anything to me, which is meaningless. So when I want to print this employee object, I want some sensible output and that's why I have written the two string method. Two string method is automatically called when I say system.out.println on a, any, any object, right? So the two string associated with that class gets called. Then we wrote a, another line, uh, another class, uh, which was called the student comparator. This is going to help us when we are start sorting and it tells us how to compare two students. Uh, so if you notice, the comparator is a special class which implements the comparator interface. Today, after this, I'll start talking about interfaces. So class student comparator implements the comparator interface. We went and checked the comparator interface. Comparator interface is like an abstract class which has to be uh, implemented, whose methods have to be implemented. What was the method in comparator? The only method in comparator, if you go and check in the documentation, there is a one method called compare. What does compare take as parameters? It takes two whatever kind of objects. If it is a comparator on students, it will take student objects. If it's a comparator on employees, it will take employee objects. So class student comparator implements comparator uh, on student. You see, I have written the compare method, which shows how to compare two students. So if age is same, if age is same, then uh, what happens? It's in ascending order of roll numbers. S1 roll number minus S2 roll number. If age is not same, it is in descending order. S2 comes first, descending order. Okay, just remember that way. Descending order of age. So, if ages are different, first it does on descending order of age. If age is same, only if age is same, then it does in ascending order of roll number. Uh, for the student. Then we went to main. In main, we created on line 30 to 34, we instantiated four objects and we got four references, ST1, ST2, ST3, ST4, four different students. Then we did on line 35, we created a list of student, which is new array list student. Uh, we created an array list of student, which is a list and we added those students to that list. Okay. Then we instantiated. At this moment, if I print the list, the data will come in the order in which it went in. So it will come 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. Whatever order in which I added, if I just print list, it will come. Now, I don't want it in that order. I want it in some kind of sorted order, which will be dictated by the student comparator, which is the class which I had created earlier. And I instantiated this class on line 40 student comparator sc is equal to new student comparator which is the class we created earlier now when i sort the data okay uh, on line 41 i printed the data before sorting uh, and then on line 42 i printed the data 
uh, no, 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 line 42, I did the sorting, keeping in mind the comparator which I have supplied. So I want to sort employees based on some comparator logic which I have supplied using SC. SC holds the comparator logic. So I have SC. And then after that, on line 43, I am displaying the list after sorting. That's all I am doing. Rest of the code is not crucial. This is what I did. Does everybody at least understand some of this? No? Yes? yes sir. Okay. So can you shoot one more? I mean, can you do one now? Similar? 10 minutes? 15 minutes? Okay. We will open one question. Let's see how many of you do it. It's exactly on the same lines as what I talked about. Only thing is, instead of students, we have employees. And instead of the criteria being age and uh, whatever, uh, we have different different criteria. Uh, day 4, program 1. So please give it a shot. We have given the main. Okay, I'll just walk through the code once for... Can somebody just... Uh, somebody say it. Yeah, let's go through the code. Okay, we have this as the code. We are reading the data from the user. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, we are splitting, reading, doing whatever. Uh, so don't worry about it. We have created the main and we have created the data in the MP list. We are adding the data onto the MP list. Okay, and then we are printing before, printing afterwards. Uh, that's it. So you have to create, look at our code and figure out how you should create class employee. See, there is on line 61, you have to do a little bit of thinking. Look at line 61. Line 61, we are instantiating. So that will tell you what the constructor needs and what data it needs. First is uh, the employee number. The second one is a string, employee name. Okay. So the sample input itself tells you what is the kind of data. Okay. The data is, first is employee ID. Second is employee name, third is age, fourth is salary, fifth is designation. So we have the data, you have to create the, you have to, okay, what all do you have to do? You have to not bother about, okay, can we go to the code? Okay, go up. Oh. You have to just create the class employee and uh, in which you will have to write a constructor, you have to declare the state, you have to declare the constructor, you have to also write the two string method uh, as per what output we are seeking. So be a little observant, you will get it. You have to write the two string method and you also have to write a comparator, an employee comparator. Okay. So you have to create these two classes, employee class and comparator class. Uh, Okay, I think that should be enough. At second year level, you should be able to do this. Okay, so, and look at the output. Okay, this is how the input comes. And output should be in sorted order. Yeah, the first line indicates before sorting output. Second line, after sorting. Now, how should the data be sorted? Okay, go back. So, yeah, if more than one, uh, yeah, your task is to sort the data based on their salary in descending order. If more than uh, one employee has the same amount of salary, then sort in the ascending order of their age. Uh, if more than employee has the same salary and same age, then sort based on employee name in ascending order. So, name is in ascending order and uh, age is also ascending order. Okay, so here... Yeah, here is a test case. If you see, in this case, uh, Sudhakar, in case 3, sample input 3, Sudhakar and Ram have the same salary and same age. Now, in that case, they should be sorted by, Sita. oh, sorry, Sita also. So, three people have the same age and salary. In that case, we should sort in an ascending order of their name. So, if you sort in ascending order of name, 
S T. Okay, so Sita will come first. Huh? R S, sorry. Ram will come first. Sita will come second, and Sudhakar will come third. Okay. So the criteria are that way. Okay, let's see. Anyone finishing? Okay, I'll I'll solve this with you. We'll solve this uh, together, and then hopefully you soon will get the grip. Okay, we'll start solving. Let's implement the class first. So the class has four fields. First is you can be in any order. First is employee number or employee ID. Then second is a string which is an employee name. Third is a salary which can be double or float followed by space. Okay, so actually you can see from the main code also. Go back to indicate the data types. Now go to the main. Main will tell no. Ah, if you look at the main, he is splitting it as string and then passing it as all strings. Huh? How are you passing? So it has to be integer, then name, then age, then salary, then designation. Okay, that will tell you how the data has to come. So integer dot percent employee number. Now you should look at a constructor, look at this data, and then conclude the data type. So the moment I see, uh, you see, you have to read the question a bit. I think we should be more clear as to what should be our data type, but it's okay. So string eid, string ename, double salary, and then we have. Um, uh, age which is int and string which is designation okay some of you may have got confused with the data types i think we should be more clear with our data types okay now this is the this is the class these are the state variables of a class five of them eid ename salary age and designation and now we have to pass and write the uh, constructor int id we call it whatever you want, uh, comma, string name, string name, uh, this is how you write the constructor, then uh, double s, this is how anyway you give parameters, age, int a, and string desic, okay, so now we will assign those data. EID equal to ID, ename equal to name, uh, salary is equal to S, uh, age is equal to A, and uh, string desig is equal to D. So this is our constructor. Okay. Then what do we need? We need a two string method to be displaying this employee object. We need a two string method. So the two string method signature is public string returns a two string, does not take any parameters. And what does it do? It has to display that employee object. So depends on how you want it to display that your output will show. So first comes, uh, if you see your output, First comes the employee ID, then the name, then the age, then the salary, and then the designation. So it has to come in that order in one line. Okay, so let's write it. Uh, return EID plus space plus name, ename, plus space plus uh, salary comes next, no? Salary plus designation plus space plus designation no so salary plus age designation is last okay plus age plus designation that's what the format tells us this is how you create semicolon okay. so this is our two string method to display an object of this class and uh, that completes our class that's all we had asked you to do and then write the comparator. So 
we have said how to create the class create class create the state write the constructor and also write the two string method so that that object can be displayed now write the comparator how do you compare two employees remember the comparator has only one method compare that's all and it returns an int always so that is the signature of that method public int compare and how should the comparison be done first the comparison should be done on salary so we will say if salary is same what should we do and then we will check age if age is same what we should do we will, we will have to write a slightly uh, involved uh, statement so we will say if salary is same we should start with the outermost criteria yeah if uh, no compare takes two parameters no compare will always take two parameters the two employees which need to be compared uh, employee e1 employee e2 these are the two employees which the comparator will compare every time so we have e1 e2 okay what will we write there we will write uh, first we will compare if the salaries are same then we will write the logic if e1 dot sal equal to equal equal e2 dot sal okay if salaries are same then we should take their age into consideration but the age should be in ascending order no okay so we will first write the condition for equality if even's age also is same if even's age is same as e2's age that means in this case salaries are same ages are same then what we should do we should order based on name right we should order based on name in ascending order so how are we going to write that so we should say return uh, will it be okay if we say even dot name minus can we say that no what should we say okay this i should have said i didn't tell you so how do you compare two strings i will go through the compare methods this immediately after this so we should say even dot compare to but this is where your googling skill also comes into action how do you compare two strings uh, even dot compare to e2 now this compare to method which works on strings no not even dot compare to even dot name or e name even dot e name compare to dot compare to compare to e2 dot e name now what this does is this does an ascending order comparison if you want descending order comparison you should put a minus or you should reverse it okay so this is even dot name uh, will return a negative number if it is less than e2 dot name because we want ascending order this will work if you wanted descending order on name then you were, would say e2 dot name compared to e1 dot name you can do that or put a minus here that also is fine okay so this is when salaries are same and age are same else we are writing the else this else is when when will this else come when salaries are same but the ages are not same so ages have to be in ascending order if salary is same age has to be in ascending order so what will we say return return what will i say even dot age minus e2 dot age always the first one comes first in ascending order even dot age minus e2 dot age this inner else gets executed if age is same sorry age is different but salary is same now we are going to the outer else outer else is when the salaries are different then they should be in descending order of salaries so i should say e2 dot sal return yes return e2 dot sal minus e1 dot sal because i want salaries in descending order that's it we are done
You're good. Who is that? Very good. Salary, if I return difference between salaries, that is a double. Whereas the result should be integer. So I have to cast. In case of doing this comparison, I have to do a casting. So casting is like in any other language. So you should say int. Cast that result into int. It should always return an int. It's a compare method, no? It will do that. Is this okay? What am I doing? I am subtracting whatever in double form, casting the integer to integer. I should get integer at the end of it. Because uh, the return type of this method has to be integer. It can't be anything else. We have to return an integer. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's check whether this does the trick. If this salary is greater, that is M, M1 salary is greater than M2 salary, we are returning a minus one. So that is what? Descending order only, no? So that is what we are doing, no? No, no, what is the error? Look at our code, what is the error? So first should be ID. What is the order in which you have given? Third is salary, no? Third is age. You have to enter records. Okay, let's see whether it works. Okay, so we tried this. Let's see whether it works. 101 name, S is the, uh, sorry, 101 is the number, S is the age, uh, sorry, S is the name, 24 is the age, 4500, and A and C. So, uh, A and C are the designation. We are doing nothing with designation. So, it is sorted by salary descending order. Okay, this is fine. Now, we have to test whether it works for all kinds of situations. Right? Now, yeah, give it for evaluation. Let's see. Ah, now it's evaluating. Okay, now the code works, so I can talk about the code. We made small errors. We ah, we goofed up on the parameter order. That's okay. You can check it and match it. Age has to come earlier than salary or something. Okay, so we changed it. The two string output should be name, ID plus name plus age plus salary plus designation. We are writing it a little differently. Then the other error was, can you come down? The other error was this last line, 74. The return type of a compare operation should always be an integer. It was not there. There was a double. So we corrected it. Somebody correctly suggested that. And that's it. Otherwise, the code is fine. Okay, It works. So we'll give you this code. So we have, we have finished employee name. Uh, data was different, but rest of it is same. Okay. So what have we learned so far? We have learned how to create a class. We have learned how to write a two-string method, which is like the Python REPR method. We have also learned how to, how to uh, write a comparator, which will do various kinds of comparison. Now you can write a comparator without any problem. The power of writing comparator is very important because in most problems that you'll do later, it is how you write the comparator. That is why we are introducing the comparator early because you'll have a lot of data and you have to order the data in a particular way. Okay, So you need that. Okay, now I'm going to go back and introduce a class which I should probably have done a little earlier. Uh, now, what, are the, what do you think is the most important class in Java which we have to study? Anyone? Now, I'm just asking, what do you think is the most important class supplied by Java language? 
string, no? Because most of the work we do is with strings. So we are going to go and look at some of the things in a string class, but I'm not going to explain each and every method. I'm just going to tell you what that method does. And soon we'll create exercises through which we'll work with strings also, okay? So we'll go to the string class in Java just to see how powerful it is and we we'll like to make it a little bigger. Okay, so we will walk through some of the important methods of a string class. You'll need all these methods in the coming days to become smart with the string class because strings are something we work with very often and very, uh, very common. I'll not talk about all methods, I'll talk about important methods because there are thousands of methods, not thousands. There are a lot of methods. So I'll talk about the important methods. Now, the first method that you see is caret. On a string object, you can say caret and give the index. Now, this is needed in, C, in Java, not needed in C++. In C++, you take a string, put square bracket, you get the character. You don't do that. You can't do that here. In Java, you can't say, for that you have to convert the string into an array of characters and then you can do the square bracket. But on a string class, you can't directly say that. Okay, let me elaborate as I go. I'll talk about it. Okay, so I think I'll explain here. String s is equal to kmit. First of all, this will work if you uh, do it like this or you say string s is equal to new string kmit. Both are valid. In fact, this is a shortcut to this. Uh, not really. But this will also work and this will also work. What this will do is, you know, S is a reference, so it will create an S and it will create a heap and it will create a string KMIT on the heap. It will allocate this and make S point to that. This is what happens here. Here also something similar happens. Only thing is this doesn't come from the standard uh, heap. There is something called a literal pool. So when you give it like this, this is called a literal initialization. Literal initialization. So here also, let's call this S1 and let's call this S2. So S1. Here also S2 is S1. This, sorry, this is S2. S1 is created and it points to an object on the heap, but not on the standard heap. This is a standard heap. When you say new, you get the object on the standard heap. When you say equal to just KMIT, there is a piece of memory called as a literal pool in which this KMIT will be created. There is some difference between the literal pool and the heap, uh, which I will talk about soon, but not immediately. So there is, there, is, there is this string in both the cases. S1 is created in the literal pool. S2 is created in new string. Now, I am talking about the caret method. So when you say uh, in, in C++, uh, I could have said S2, 0, and I would have got K. Or rather, if I had said S2, 0, I would have got K. This is what I would have got. This I can do in C++, because a string is internally an array of characters. I can't do this in uh, Java. If I want a character at a particular index starting at 0, I have to say S2 dot char at and pass the parameter 0, then I will get this k. Now this seems like a lot of work, but that is what it is. You have to say char at 0 to get a particular character at a particular position. You can't just get it just like that. You can't say square bracket like, a, like you can do in C++. So that is where the caret method comes to give you a character at a particular index. Okay? So let's go forward and see some of the more interesting methods. Then you have caret, then let's go down. 
and you have you saw the compare to just now we used on two strings we use the compare to method which allows one string to be compared with another string it compares the two strings lexicographically so if you compare a string a b c uh, with a b d then it will return a negative number that is what uh, it's supposed to do. because lexicographically a b c is smaller than a b d so it will return a minus one or a negative number whatever it may be uh, so if you want to do it in ascending order you should say s1 dot compare to s2 so this will compare two strings these are all methods called on a given string the with the second string as a parameter now you can do compare to string or you can do compare to with ignore case i don't have to explain what that means you just forget about the case and then compare okay so otherwise lower case is more lexicographically higher than upper case you know this right because the ascii value of lower case is more uh, if you have small abc or, or small a and big a then small a is more that is lexicographically ahead uh, so okay then the other method which comes in handy is concatting but you don't really need con concat to do s1 and s2 concatenation you simply have to say string s3 is equal to s1 plus s2 it will do it you don't have to call concat okay uh, in fact concat uh, if you see uh, it returns a string it works on a string but if you see the concat code uh, can you click on concat yeah if you click on concat you will see that uh, uh, concats it changes the original string and concats the specified string at the end of the string so uh, if you see cares is the string dot concat s returns cares uh, and uh, to concat get uh, and concat her returns together okay anyway that i think is easy but i don't see anybody using concat everybody uses a plus it's very rare that you use concat okay next then contains uh, contains is not that popular but it is just to check whether a given string exists in another string but there is a easier way of doing it called index of will come there so uh, i will as i said talk only about the interesting method ha huh? now the other interesting method we can skip down copy value and all we don't use uh, we don't use much uh, the no no above that ends with uh, this is often used to check whether there is a proper suffix to a string suppose a string represents a file name or something and you want to check whether it's a png or a jpg or something so the easiest way of doing it is take that string which represents a file name check whether it ends with either a jpg ends with jpg that is you check whether uh, ends with another suffix string so if it ends with jpg or png uh, you know in that kind of situation this comes in very handy then uh, equals is equals uh, it returns uh, uh, the equality of two strings uh, it's a boolean boolean return whether it is equal or not equal then equals with ignore case i think is straightforward uh, we, you know what ignore case means format uh, uh, that is if you are fond of that c style format of percentage f percentage d and all i don't think anybody uses it i have never used it so i don't think it will be used okay uh, get bytes very rarely is useful that is if you want to convert a string into its byte version okay this is not very common this is only if you want to store it somewhere or you want to transmit it over a network or something but there are better ways of doing it i have never i have rarely used this method i will not say never so i'll skip get 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 uh, bytes get cares nobody uses it uh, ah the next popular method is hash code but you already know what is hash code every object has a hash code so if you want to see remember if you print an object uh, we get the hash code we can do that this is a inherited method every object in c++ has a hash code okay so you can always this method is there in every class so whether you like it or not it's always there the the useful method is index of index of is used uh, very popularly the second form of index of is used to check whether a given string is or a given string or a given character 
is part of a string or not. You want to say, uh, you know, you are given a big string and you want to check whether it is part of that big string or not. Something is part of that big string as at what position it is there. So it will, if it is there, it will return the index. If it is not there, it will give a minus one. Uh, there are two variation, variations are there, one with character, one with string. And the second variation is, normally this index of will search from the beginning of the string. If you want to pick up all the occurrences, then you will look for the first occurrence. Then from where it occurred, subsequently you will look. So you will say uh, the second argument. That is, you want to see search in the string, but not from the beginning, but you want to search from that index. Just keep that in mind. That is when you want to do uh, search for the string again and again in that to find all occurrences. Then you will have to use from index because first time you will get the first index, second time you will have to take that index plus one uh, search again. So that that is very useful. So this index of is a very popular method. In turn is something which I just mentioned about string literals. I will not talk about it now. We will talk about it later. Uh, in turn not used often. Empty is whether the string is null or not. Is it an empty string or not? Uh, that is used often. Uh, now this join is a recent addition and uh, uh, it, it is very interesting. Okay. So, okay, let me explain where it comes. Where it comes really, really handy is, uh, this is a very new addition. Uh, okay, suppose you have, I think you have seen it in Python. We, we used, this is, this is exactly, this was not there because Python guys had it, they added it. So, what does it do? Uh, two things as uh, parameters. There are various uh, versions of this, but the second version, which you see at the bottom, that is, it takes a delimiter as a first parameter and it takes an iterable. Iterable means a list. Uh, okay, I'll probably show you this. Okay, you can do something like this. String, I think it's a static method. No? Dot join. This is a static method, so it's called on a class directly. First, you give the delimiter. So delimiter, let's say, is colon. And then you give a list of some kind. So if it's a list of numbers or a list of strings, suppose there's a list of strings, and the strings here are, let's say, uh, A, uh, then A, B, C, then C, D, E, and so on. If this is a list, then what this will do is this will produce a nice thing like A colon, huh? It will produce this nice thing. Are you with me? So this is the join. This is how it works in Python. Remember or not? The same. This is the Python equivalent. It was not there in earlier versions of Java. It was added here. So when you want to do some kind of concatenation of strings, which are strings or objects which are given in a list. List means an iterable. It could be an array also. You pass an array of strings and pass this join delimiter, it will put that delimiter in between. It is a reverse of split joins. Okay? So that is how it is created. So it's a very useful. This, this is very useful. Okay? Achha, there is, we saw index of, similarly there is last index of, which starts from the right to left. Uh, achha, here I will pause a bit to just give you this insight. If you are working with English, index of works left to right and last index of works right to left. No, yes. If you are working with Arabic, index of works this way, last index of works this way. Are we clear? Common sense, no? And if you are working with Mandarin, then top to down is index of, bottom to up is last index of. Anyway, these are all documented. The point I am making is, Java is not limited to English. Java works with every language. It works with English, it works with Arabic, it works with Devanagari, all scripts of Devanagari. That is, it works with Telugu, works with Hindi, works with Marathi, works with any language. Okay? So, all languages are absorbed in Java. Okay? And in also in Python, by the way, now. So, but Java is one of the first language which has this internationalization support. Okay? 
Uh, okay, so last, if you know index of, last index of is ulta. From the, from the end, index of is from the beginning. This is also very popular. Next. Length, obviously it's used. See, unlike uh, C++, where at the end of the string there is a null character, there is no such null character. Instead, length is stored. So you can get the length of a string. Then offset is never used. Uh, uh, no, even this is not used. Replace is used. Replace is when you want to replace one character with another character or replace a string in a string that is a substring with another substring. That is when you use replace. Then replace will just do first replacement. Replace all will replace all. Okay. Then, uh, okay. I did rejects with you, right? Okay. That replace all works with rejects also. So you identify a regular expression pattern and say wherever this pattern is found, replace it with something else, it will work. Okay, it's very powerful that way. And we use it extensively. So that is replace all. Replace first will only do first replacement. Split, again very useful, ulta of join. So you give the delimiter, which you can give as a regular expression also. It will split a string, it will chop a string into pieces. Very common, very useful. In fact, one of the most commonly used method. Uh, then, uh, okay. Then starts with, starts with is used and starts with, uh, with the first one is used. It's same as ends with. If you want to see some kind of a prefix, uh, like some files always start with P, some files start with B, you know, if you want to watch that, you, you use this starts with, same as ends with. Then the other method which is common is sub substring. Subsequence we don't do much. Uh, we do substring quite a lot. So substring is used to check. There are two versions of substring. Both are popular. The first version of substring starts with an index, goes up to end. And the second version starts with begin index, goes up to end index, but does not include end index. It is end index minus one, always, like Python. The last value is not taken, remember? When we say colon, the last value is not taken. The last value is the last index but one. Okay. Huh? Okay. So, uh, now, two char array, if you want to convert a string into an array of characters, if you want to use the square bracket, this is typically I have seen people who have done a lot of C++ programming, they get irritated by not having that ability. They have this affinity to put square brackets they don't like put char at. For those people I have seen, first what they do, if you give a string and they are doing manipulation on a string, they, they convert that string into char array, into familiar domain and then start writing code. This you will see in people who have a strong C++ hangover, right? So they, they always prefer converting into array of characters because they are, that's what they are comfortable with. So, okay. Then lower case is used again, very useful. Once in a while, to lower case, to upper case. Uh, to string is already a string, so you don't need it. Achha, you will see what is this to lower case, to upper case. I told you, you know, English has upper case and lower case. Now, Arabic doesn't have lower case, upper case, right? Oh, you can't write in upper case. No, yes. No, there is no upper case in most scripts, right? So that has to be locale based, correct? It's based on the locale means which language, which this locale is a very interesting idea. We'll, we'll do a lot of functions on this. Locale, do you know there is two kinds of German? I'm just taking an example. German as it is spoken in Germany is different. German as spoken in Switzerland is different. Do you know a part of Switzerland speaks German? A large part in fact. So there is, the, that is a separate locale. The locale decides, now why is locale important? When you represent a number, okay, in English, most of us are used, after million there is a comma, after thousand there is a comma. You know this, no? In ger and in decimal they put a dot, correct? In Germany they do ulta. What they do? Between million and thousand there is a dot and 
where we put a decimal, they put a comma. That is a local German uh, locale. Okay. Then trim. Trim is trim. Trim is trim. Trimming of spaces, right? So if you want to trim spaces, that is what you use. Then value of we don't use. Uh, well, that's it. So those are the functions which we get. Plus there are some functions which come from the primordial object class. I'll talk about them separately. So these are some functions which you should be familiar with the string class. Okay. So does this make sense? Now I've not introduced any function. We'll intend to do that through exercises. We'll do programs and, and do that. Okay. Okay, this was one idea which we wanted to talk about. And so this is the string class. Okay. So we'll next session we'll introduce string examples. You should become very good at string class. Okay, now I am going to introduce yet another idea, which is the idea of an interface, which I should have talked about earlier. I am doing it now. So the idea of an interface is a very easy idea. I will explain it in five minutes or we will create code and explain in five minutes what is an interface. Okay, so let me just write code. An interface in simple terms while he is while he's starting writing code is an abstract class. In C++, we call it an abstract class. But in C, in Java, there is something called an abstract class and something called an interface also. We'll, we'll understand the difference. Hopefully, in the next 10 minutes, we'll understand the difference between an abstract class and an interface. I'll give you the definition and then we'll talk about it. An abstract class, all methods need not be abstract. And in interface, all methods are abstract. Okay, I, it requires a bit of elaboration, and whatever I have said is not hundred percent true in version eight onwards. But we'll nevertheless talk, talk about it. Let's go step by step. Understand? We'll just understand the idea of interface. Okay. Now, the best way to understand is to create an example and look at it. Okay. So I'm creating an interface. Interface uh, I or interface, call it whatever name, uh, example, interface example, okay. And I'm going to create two methods in an interface, okay. Uh, void m1 and void m2. Achha. Now, normally, a, when I create an interface, it's like a class. I said it's like an abstract class. What am I not allowed to do? I am not allowed to give body to the methods. If I try to give body to the methods, it will shout. Except Java 8 onwards, a particular kind of method in an interface can have body. But we will hold back on that. Let us not immediately do. So till Java 7 or till Java before Java 8, uh, an interface methods cannot have body because they are abstract. Abstract methods cannot have body. Pure virtual in C++ cannot have body. So think of this methods in an interface, they can't have body. Then you will ask, what is the use of this interface? There is nothing in it. No flesh. It is just skeleton, right? It has just methods. So, okay. Now, okay, hopefully you will get it. Now, and I will create a class which implements this interface and then we will see what is the consequence of that. So class A implements, please keep typing with me, day 4 lab 2, A implements that interface example, implements example. So now I will pause here for a moment. What is example? Example is an interface, right? Class A tells the compiler, class A is telling the compiler that I am going to implement this interface. When a class says I am going to implement an interface, it is mandatory for that class to do what? To provide body for each and every method of that interface, either directly or through inheritance. But right now there is no inheritance. So if class A has to be a non-abstract class, then it has to compulsively provide body for both 
m1 and m2 okay so i'll say m1 of i'll just put a system dot out dot println system dot out dot println m1 of a called m1 of a called okay and i'll also provide body for m2 we'll just duplicate it okay so i have m2 also i'll say m2 of a called okay now are you clear about class a class a is doing nothing what is it doing it is implementing example example has how many methods m1 and m2 it is just providing some dummy body for m1 and some dummy body for m2 saying m1 called m2 called dummy okay but class a is good because it says i will implement this interface and it is providing body for both the methods of the interface so it's a good class it's a concrete class okay we'll we'll play with this in a moment i'll implement a class b which also implements example and more or less has the same body okay now i'll just change it to m1 of b called m1 of b called m2 of b called okay class b implements example okay then we have class a implementing example class b also implementing example fair enough now let's do some main okay and then we'll realize and make some conclusions okay we'll say class test as usual this is a driver class so being a driver class what should it have public static void main remember we talked about this public static void main otherwise you can't do anything with this class so public static void main with string args uh, array of string okay now now i'll say example e example e okay let's just now pause a bit what have i created what did i create huh good i created a reference reference to what i created a reference to an interface please i didn't create a reference to a class i created a reference to an interface but remember an interface is an abstract class can i say now example e in the next line can i say or in the same line can i say is equal to new example can i say that no i can't say that an interface can never be instantiated because i told you an interface is an abstract class can you instantiate an abstract class you can't so you can't say example e is equal to new example that's ridiculous because example is not a real class example is an interface it's an abstract definition it cannot be instantiated otherwise i won't say it's an interface it is just a so what is an interface okay now i have a common example for this okay an interface is like an expectation when i say a class implements an interface what are we saying i am demonstrating i have some capability when i say for example look at there class b implements example what is it telling the compiler look i am a great guy i provide logic for all the methods in example whatever are the methods in example i provide all those behaviors can a class implement any number of interfaces or can it implement only one a class can implement as many interfaces as you want so the common analogy which is given here is it's a class can be like ravan with 10 faces one face is a musician another face is a statesman like that there is one ravan and he can implement many faces depending upon the requirement of course here we are only having one interface but please understand the moot point is example e is an interface i cannot instantiate it however i can say is equal to new a 
Is this allowed? No, yes. This is allowed. Why? Because A happens to be a class which implements this interface. So, I will now make a statement which you remember. An interface reference, I am repeating, an interface reference can point to an object of any class which implements this interface either directly or indirect. Once again, an interface reference can point to any object of any class as long as that class implements that interface either directly or indirectly. Indirectly means via inheritance. We will discuss that separately. So, this is a perfect line. Now, I can say E dot M1. Correct? I can say this. I can also say E is equal to new B and I can say E dot M1 again. Now, can you guess what will be my output of this program? What is my output? M1 of A chord, after that M1 of B chord. Everybody agrees with that? Why will that happen? Why will that happen is, on line 23, I am creating an uh, example reference, I am pointing it to a A object. And then, when I am using 24, E dot M1, E is pointing to an A object, and M1 is being called, so it will be called on the object it is pointing to, which is A object. It will be A, A is M1 called. Then on line 25, I am changing E and making it point to a B object. And then I am calling again M1. So it will say, I want M1 of B called. Let's run it once and check whether we get what we get, what we are supposed to get. So as expected, we get M1 of A called and M1 of B called. Okay. Now, uh, now I hope you understand what is the purpose of interface? I will explain, uh, maybe I have not elaborated. See what happens is, this is a very major difference between Java and C++. See, a class exhibits multiple behaviors, right? An interface is a way of saying that I want a particular class to exhibit a particular behavior. Now, if you look at this code, can we go up? Can we go up? Yeah. Now, if you look at this code, I have two different kinds of classes, A and B. They have nothing in common with each other. They need not have anything in common with each other, except that both of them implement an interface example. Because both of them are implementing an interface example, I can do something with them in a collective way. Like what? I can create, okay, now I will go down to main and show you something and then we will stop for today. So, I will now create an array of example references. Look at the way I am going to do. I am going to say example EARR, okay, EARR is equal to new example square bracket 2. What did I do? What happened? I created an array. Array of what? Example objects? I created an array of two example references. It's an array with two slots. Can you imagine an array with two slots? Each slot is an example reference. Yes? No? Okay. Now, I can say EARR of 0 is equal to is equal to new A. Am I allowed to say this? No, yes. Nothing wrong, no? ERR 0 is an example reference. Example reference can point to any object as long as that class implements that interface. I am not violating that. ERR 0 is a reference, not pointing anywhere right now. Now it is pointing to an object of class A, it is valid, 
Why is it valid? Because A implements that interface. So I am valid. A implements that interface, no? Example. And similarly, ERR1. ERR1. ERR1 is equal to new B. Am I right in saying that also? Do you understand what has happened? Two completely different people, A and B, two different classes, I have made them sit in some kind of an array because of the fact that they are implementing a common interface called example. Actually, A may not have anything to do with B. A may, may not be an ancestor of B, B may not be an... They have nothing to do with each other. The only commonality between them is that they are implementing an interface example. They can be anybody, anything of no similarity to each other. This was not there in C++. In C++, if I could put two people in an array, two different objects of classes in an array, those classes needed to have a parent-child relationship or a descendant or a parent relationship. They had to be derived classes or one class, base class of another. This cannot happen in C++. I don't know whether I am reaching. In C++, you cannot have completely separate classes sitting together in one array. Here, because of the idea of that interface uh, idea, which can be implemented by A, B, anything. Caterpillar can implement it, a stick can implement it, a chair can implement it. They have nothing in common with each other. Only thing they have is, they all implement an interface. So now, I can, I can actually accommodate them in an array and on each one of them, I can call any method in an array as if it's a collection. So now let's write a for loop for each element uh, example e for each example e in EARR in EARR I am calling e dot m m1 or m2 okay I am I am I, I hope you are understanding what I am trying to get at see they have a and b have nothing to do with each other they are implementing a common interface because of that, I am able to create two references to them, make them sit in an array and then call individual. Now, their individual methods will be called. So, now, let's just, uh, ah, okay, e dot m2 also, fine. So, let's run this and check what happens. First of all, does it run? And if it runs, what does it produce? Variable e is already somewhere earlier. Oh, call it e1. Okay. Okay. Uh, look at the, I think the first ones we should have not, uh, yeah, the M1 of A called, M2 of A called, uh, M1 of B called, M2 of B called. It's calling one after another without any problem, okay. So, anyway, we can, so this is where we'll stop today. What we have, what I want you to understand is, uh, we can comment that. Uh, I want you to understand from line 27 onwards, we are creating an array of uh, example references and then the first ERR, remember we are creating an array of example references. Example is not a class, it's an abstract class, it's an interface. So I'm creating an array of interface references. Then each element I'm pointing differently, ERR0 I'm pointing to A, ERR1 I'm pointing to B, and then I am saying, for example, even uh, call for each even in ERR, call even M1 and M2. Go to the next, call M1 and M2. So we are able to make it work. Now, this is a very big thing in Java because in Java, everything is defined as an interface. So like, for example, let's say this and stop. Yesterday we did, we did student class. Last class we did student class. Today we did employee class. If you realize, yesterday we were sorting students. Today we are sorting employees. Both these classes, student and employee, had nothing to do with each other. 
They were not derived from each other. They had no connection with each other. But why could I use the same sort on them? Because, I mean, the method was collection dot sort, and one one yeah, the other day I passed an array of student. Today I passed a list of employees or whatever. Why did it work on both? Because when I said sort, it was looking for a method compare or comparator. It was looking for a comparator and a compare method. Now, comparator, if you recollect, was implemented as an interface, and that comparator was capable of comparing employees also, and comparator was comparing uh, students also. See, our comparator only implemented a standard interface called comparator. Right? If you look at the code, yeah, if you look at this, our class comparator implements comparator. Today, the comparator worked on employees. The logic, the method was the same, compare only. In last class, if you look, the method was the same, compare. So, both the days, we implemented a comparator. One was an employee comparator, one was a student comparator. But what is comparator? Comparator is an interface. What kind of method does it have? Compare. What can it compare? The kind of objects it is used on. Okay? So that is an advantage of having an interface. So you see the class comparator, employee comparator, implements a comparator interface. That comparator is that thing which is bringing in that commonality. I, I, what I want you to get and whole exercise was for that purpose. You are having a student class, you are having an employee class. More or less, whatever we translated from student, we could translate to employee. Whatever we had learned with doing with student, we could translate to employee. The comparison concept was the same because it was encapsulated in an interface. As long as a student comparator or an employee comparator implements compare, that is what sort seeks. The logic for sort depends on the two classes being comparable. That is, they should have some kind of a comparator object. Okay? So, we will pause here, but in the next session, what we will do is, we will do a lot of string methods and we will discuss a lot of interfaces, how to work with interfaces of different kinds. We will create example and do it. Okay. We will stop here.